Hi, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and uh, I think it's time to get hands-on in this series Advanced Development for Grasshopper. And the first thing that I'm going to teach you is how to use scripting to create your own components. Now, what is scripting? Scripting is basically writing computer code, just like in any other platform. The only thing is that the term scripting is typically, is, is typically more specifically writing computer code inside an environment that is going to be running that code and with the goal of customizing how that environment actually behaves. This is as opposed to, for example, writing computer code with the goal of creating a standalone application that will be executed by Windows, such as like a Windows app, a Mac app, a Linux application, or writing a mobile app, for example. Uh, here, the goal is instead of having a standalone thing, being able to write code inside an environment to customize that environment. Okay, And Grasshopper is actually really great at giving us tools to do that because it has three main ways of allowing you to write, to do scripting inside of it. So if we go here to the math tab, you can see that there's a full category called scripting that has some evaluations and expression. And you already know that I love the expression component if you have followed me on the introduction to parametric modeling series. But you can see that we have here three components that allow us scripting. We have the visual basic one, we have the Python one, and we have the C sharp one. So what are these components actually about? Well, these components are very interesting because what they do is that they allow you to double click on them. And when you double click on them, this window pops up that is a small development environment where you can write computer code. This works for the C sharp one. This works for the Visual Basic one, which is very similar. And this works for the Python one, which just popped up on my other window, which is slightly different, but it's very similar as well in behavior. What is the difference between the three of them? Well, as you probably have guessed, they are three different programming languages. So you can script in Visual Basic, Python, or C Sharp. All right. And what's very interesting is that each one of these allow you to customize the inputs. So what you feed it as data to customize the output. And then to also have like a console kind of environment where you can print things, but not uh, change the behavior of the component. All right. I will explain very soon on the next video, how to actually work with this. Um, well, what we're going to do in this series is that, first of all, the visual, we're not going to use the Visual Basic component at all, because Visual Basic was a or is a programming language that had been used for Windows applications since the very early onset of Windows. But these days, as of 2021, it's kind of declining and I don't think it's a very popular language anymore. And basically the functionality is so, so similar to C Sharp that honestly between you and I, I don't see why you would use Visual Basics as opposed to C Sharp right now. There are some people that uh, believe that Visual Basic is better for interactivity things. So like keyboard, mouse, like clicking on the screen, that kind of event handling uh, behavior. But since we're not going to be doing much of that, and Grasshopper is also not about that, it's about the geometry and stuff, uh, we're not going to be using Visual Basic at all in this series. Now, there's the Python component, and you probably already know that Python is a super popular language and that um, um, people believe that it's really great for syntax, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I have very different opinions if you already know me as well. <laughs> but, um, but it's a very popular one and it's getting a lot of traction and I see more and more people using doing scripting inside of Grasshopper using Python. Okay. Now we may or may not touch upon Python development at the very end of this series. I can't promise right now. So if the videos are there, then I decided to do it. If they're not, then maybe sometime in the future. But if you're a Python person and you're saving many of the things that you will learn here in this series will be translatable and applicable to Python development inside of Grasshopper. The main reason why we're not going to do Python, the main language in this series, but instead we're going to be using the C sharp scripting component as the main, com as the main development 
uh, component in this series is because, first of all, um, we already have the learning C Sharp playlist uh, going on. So maybe that's somewhere here in the description or as a card, whatever. So you can already go to that playlist if you want to learn how to write C Sharp code. But most importantly, this is the main reason actually, is that whenever we transition from scripting inside of Grasshopper to writing our own native plugins that we can load inside of Grasshopper, like Machina, like Firefly, like Pufferfish, like all these components that people contribute to the community. Once we do that jump, the only way to develop plugins for Grasshopper in particular is using the C Sharp programming language. So that's why I believe that learning C Sharp is more beneficial because the transition to then developing native plugins is almost seamless. It's almost, almost identical. And you will see that very soon. There is just unfortunately no way of writing, of using Python to write native plugins in Grasshopper as of, um, as of September of 2021 that I'm recording this. So um, that's why I have chosen to use C Sharp as the main component that we will be talking about and the language that we will be using for most of this series. But again, if you're a Python person and you know, no one is perfect. Um, <laughs> if you're a Python person, maybe by the end of this series, I will make like a couple of videos or two or three videos talking about how everything that we have learned can also be developed using Python. All right. I know that many people in the community will be really grateful. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry, sorry. And I forgot that I wanted to offer you some additional readings and some references. So sorry, I interrupt this, this, this video. So I'm actually a huge fan of the work that Raja Isa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm sorry. Raja's work from McNeil and from the new school of architecture and design in San Diego. So I'm actually a huge fan of the work that she's done for those of you, you probably are already familiar with her essential mathematics for computational design, which is a reference book in the class that I teach as introduction to computational design. It's already in the fourth edition, but particularly for this series, I would like to recommend one of her most recent publication, Essential Guide to C Sharp Scripting for Grasshopper, where she goes over many of the topics that I will be going over in this, um, in this uh, series. It's just that she also takes the chance to use that as a segue to introducing folks to C sharp programming and also to use that as a framework for discussing some of the data structures that relate to geometry uh, that you can use in C sharp. It's a really good publication. Um, it's very comprehensive. It's a really good mix of grasshopper, C sharp programming geometry. It's quite, it's quite nice. And it assumes also that you probably know not much about programming or geometry or anything as opposed to this series where I'm assuming you know some of that stuff already. Uh, she also has this other publication, The Essential Algorithms and Data Structures. This will come in very handy down the road, especially when we start talking about the data tree structure in Grasshopper, uh, which is a very unique thing. And so I really recommend that you check this out. And, uh, but I really, really recommend this, um, this book if you want to. This is freely available. You can just Google it and download it for free from McNeil's website, open source, everything. It's really, really good. Thanks a lot, Raja, for your, for your work. And uh, if you're more of a Python-oriented person, then <laughs> there's also this publication called the Python Primer for Rhino. It's a little dated. It's from Rhino 5. It was made in 2011. But it's really comprehensive as well. It's really beautifully illustrated. It's very nice. Although it's a little more Rhino and Rhino script specific. If you want to learn more about Python applied to Grasshopper, then the Rhino Python guide in the McNeil website has a special section about Python in Grasshopper where you can learn a little bit about, um, you know, how to start the component, how to use it, uh, how to connect to Rhino, to Python libraries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I just don't, I just have not found so far a document of this kind, like the Essential Guide or the Rhino Primer, that focuses specifically on Python for Grasshopper. So, if in the future, after the recording, such document 
showed up in the world, I would be more than happy for any of you viewers to just post, put up a bunch of links in the comments uh, for such a recommendation. Okay. And sorry, let's go back to the main video. Anyway, so let's move on to the next video where I'm, we're actually going to take a closer look at this folk here. And then let's see how to customize inputs, outputs, and let's start writing our very first code inside of the Grasshopper uh, C Sharp scripting component. All right. If you like what you see so far, maybe like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe leave a nice comment, whatever, whatever your, your, your gen is. All right. Thank you very much. See you on the next video.